Hello, I'm Courtney with Love Lives On, and today I'm interviewing Andrew Latishko. He's the owner of Smith Monument Company. It's a Toronto-based company that specializes in creating beautiful grave markers for people who have passed away. Thank you, Andrew, for meeting with us today. You're welcome. So some of our viewers have been wondering, where is the best place to start when you're ordering a memorial? Well, usually the best area would be to walk around in a cemetery or different cemeteries and get ideas on what you like and don't like and then bring those thoughts to us and we'll help modify them or expand on them and make sure that they work. Perfect. And how long do you have to wait before you order a memorial? We've heard that you should wait a certain amount of time after a loved one passes away before you look into ordering. How long should you typically wait? Each, each case is going to be different. Uh, the grieving process is, is a strange one. Everybody is different whether you wait. Two months, two years, it's always going to be different. Uh, I always advise my clients to, to wait at least three, four, five, six months because their, their thought processes are not in the right frame of mind yeah. right after a few months. And will the foundation that goes under the memorial interfere with the burial at all? No. no. There is room at the head of the grave for a foundation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that cement goes down around four feet below the frost line, and it will not affect where the future burials are. It does not go on top of any present burials. Perfect. And why do cemeteries re require a concrete foundation underneath the memorial? For the same reason that as a foundation is required under a house, to, the, the granite weighs a lot, so it will tip and turn and move with the soil conditions. There's different soil types in the Ontario area. So it helps stabilize the monument and keeps it from moving. And are there any bylaws that regulate how large your memorial can be, or can I have it any size that I would like? Every single cemetery has different rules and regulations pertaining to the size of the monuments. Some are very minimal monuments that are allowed, other ones are max, some of them do not have any rules at all. So it's a difficult question to answer because every single cemetery has got different rules. And some cemeteries only allow flat bronze markers. Is that for the same reason? Each cemetery is different and have their own rules? Yeah, every cemetery is different, whether it's bronze markers or just for the ease of maintaining lawns, it's up to them. And can I have any shape or color of memorial I would like? When it comes to granite, yes. There are many colors, at least a dozen, dozen and a half. Colors of granite, the shape, the style, it's all up to the individual. What's the most common shape that you get here at West Forum? Uh, the most common monument type would be a serpentine top or an oval top, and then it can vary from that. And why can't I letter the back or ends of my memorial? Again, that's by cemetery rules. Uh, each cemetery is different. Some cemeteries do allow family name on the back. Some, if the monument's wide enough, you can put it on the side. Again, cemetery by cemetery. And my, will my memorial fade over time? <clears throat> the granite will not fade, the color. Uh, the lettering will fade. If somebody tells you elsewise, it's not true, but over time, the paint fades in a monument. Also, if it's under a tree, moisture, dampness, it all affects it. And does polishing help prevent that, or does it really not have that much of an impact? Polishing of a monument gives greater ease to the cleansing of the monument if it needs to be cleaned because it's just soap and water and away you go. Uh, when a monument has a rock finish or a, what we call a steel finish where the polish is removed, that becomes a home for things to grow on and stay. And why does it take so long to complete a memorial? <clears throat> Well, sometimes it's faster than other times, but on average it's three to five months. If I have to order the granite in from a quarry, our granites come from different parts of the world, the colors. So that takes time to import, and then there's a, a process to letter, proofing of the lettering, waiting for cemeteries to pour foundations, weather, it all comes into play. And why can't cemeteries pour foundation during the winter months? 
Because it's cold. <laughs> because it's cold. <laughs> and will moss grow on top of the memorial if it's not polished? It can grow on the top, on the sides, on the front, on the back, anywhere, depending on weather conditions. All right, so the more damp it is. Yeah, the, the more, more damp and, and, you know, dank, damp, whatever you want to call it, the moisture involved. If there's no air circulation, then of course things grow. And why should you add a wife's maiden name on Chicken Memorial if no one knows her by that name in the area? You don't have to add a wife's maiden name. Uh, it's done less and less these days, but for historical purposes, if somebody wants to go through a cemetery and check to see who that person, that person is, whatever, it does help with the historical background. Okay. And what is the price range for bronze, granite, and marble memorials? The price range, the range, actual dollars, are you talking? Yeah. From a low of 17 to $1,800 on a bronze to three, dollars $4,000 versus granite, which is probably half that price. And can you pre-order memorials? Yes. As long as there is a lot in a cemetery that you own, you can put one up. There is one cemetery in the Toronto area that does not allow pre-need monuments, but most of them, they don't care. You can put up a blank monument, family name only, fill it in later. And how do you clean and maintain a bronze, granite, and marble memorial? There is no real way. There is a refurbishing process for a bronze memorials. It's costly. It has to be removed, brought back here. A lot of times it's cheaper just to replace it. Uh, a granite one, soap and water. That's all it takes. Soap and water, and there's no solution you can buy. The best bet no. is just to yeah, make there's, there soap is and no water. required solution. Soap and water, never use any oils or waxes because they will bleed into the stone and ruin it stain. Thank you again, Andrew, for meeting with me today. You're welcome. And I'm Courtney from Love Lives On. Um, if you like what you see, take a look at our YouTube channel for more information on how we can celebrate our lives now and forever.